it looks like it's actually bouncing a little bit too high for me. So let's go back into the graph editor and we can scale the entire curve. I can make a couple of more minimal, minimal adjustments, but then I can also just select the whole curve and use the scale keys tool. So I could click in the standard toolbox to get the scale tool, or I could press the R key on my keyboard. Either way, I'll get the scale keys tool. And the thing about the scale keys tool is the location that you click in the graph editor determines the origin of the scale operation. So if I click at the bottom keyframe and middle mouse click and drag up and down, I can scale the entire curve from that as my center. So that's the center of my scale operation. If I press the Z key and undo, and do the same thing by clicking up at the top with the middle mouse button, you see I'm scaling from a different center. So I'm going to press Z again. So I want to maintain this keyframe at the bottom. So again, I'm, I'm pressing the R key with the curve selected and middle mouse click and drag. Whoops, we're going to undo. We want a middle mouse click and drag up and down, not left to right in this case. Just so we can keep the general shape of the curve, but just have it be a more gentle arc. And then minimize, go back to the camera view and play back. There we go. I think that's just about as good as it's going to get. And I'm going to save. This time I'm just going to save over the top of version 4. So we've got our position sorted out. So now we're going to rotate the ball. You'll notice the Rotate Z channel has three keyframes. Well, just like with the Translate X channel, we don't need all three keyframes. We're just going to assume that the ball is going to spin at a constant rate. So I'm going to select the center keyframe and delete it with the delete key. And then the last keyframe, we're going to change its value. We can do this in multiple ways. One way is just to go up into the statistics and change the key's time or the key's value. So it'll be easier for me to see what's going on if I position my time at frame 48 and look in my perspective view. Because remember the ball is out of frame from the camera view on frame 48. So I'm going to go to my perspective view and press F to zoom in. And I'm going to change the value here and we'll see the ball rotate as we adjust the value. So I can go up to the statistics and for example I can type in a value say like 45 degrees and press enter and now you'll see that we've got a slope to the curve and if we scrub in the timeline the ball is rotating slightly, very slightly, can't really see it very much. I can also um, interactively adjust this. This is very cool actually because if I have the move keys tool active, again the W key, and I drag with the middle mouse button, I can adjust the keys value in the graph editor while observing the result in the viewport. Additionally, if I hold down shift and middle mouse, I can constrain that movement to vertical in the graph editor. In other words, I'm changing the value. I don't want to change the time, so I'm going to press Z to undo that. So I probably want to have a lot more than just 80 degrees of rotation. So in fact, I'm going to set this to, let's say, 360. So we'll get one full rotation. We'll go back to our camera view, rewind, and play back. So you see it's turning, but in this case, it's turning in the wrong direction. It's spinning backwards. Okay, so I'll select the ball, go back to the graph editor, go back to rotate Z, press the F key. There's our keyframe in question. We'll just set this to negative 360. Put in a minus sign and press enter. And then once again test our results in the camera view. Much better. So now we've got our position keyframes sorted out and our rotation animation is done as well. We're layering the transforms, we're layering these effects. 
Cool, so I'm gonna go and save once again. Save scene as, and now we're up to ball number five. So now that we've finished our position and rotation keyframes, we can evaluate what we've got, and it looks to me like it's moving a little bit slow. If the ball is a foot in diameter, it should probably travel a little bit faster than that. So we could change the timing now, but you know what, I'm gonna opt to do that later because that will be a better and more dramatic example of how you can globally change the timing of your whole scene, okay? So I'm gonna do that later. Right now, I'm gonna forge ahead. We're gonna add some squash and stretch and get that the way we want it. And then later, we're gonna go in and change the timing of our whole scene, which is a very cool thing to be able to do. So our next step then is to add a squash deformer. I'm gonna position my timeline right on frame 24, which is where the impact is. And I'm gonna add a deformer. It's in the animation menu set. So we gotta have animation as our menu set. And there is a menu labeled create deformers. So with the ball selected, I'm gonna choose create deformers. And you'll see there are lots of deformers in here. And this is one of Maya's strong areas for character animation and any kind of deforming shapes. You've got so many incredible choices here. Right now, we're just going to do a very simple one. So it's in the category nonlinear, or what are sometimes called parametric deformers. And you'll see one labeled squash. There are really no options for me to worry about, so I'm just going to click squash. And what you should see is in your front or any of the ortho views that are wireframe, you should see a little line inside the ball. So in my front view, I'm gonna press the F key so we can frame that selection. And maybe in my perspective view too, I can press F and I could switch into wireframe for a moment with the four key to get my bearings. Okay, so that's the squash handle. And you'll notice that the squash handle is not exactly aligned with the world. In this case, it's aligned pretty close, but your mileage may vary. It may be radically different. It could be, you know, completely diagonal. Okay, so what we need to do before we start adjusting this and making our ball squash, we need to get the rotation values of this handle sorted out. Okay, so in order to see better what's going on, with the squash handle selected, I'm gonna to go to its input nodes. In squash one, I've got the factor. So this is the strength of the squash effect. I'm gonna select the, the name factor and middle mouse click and drag in the viewport left to right to adjust the squash factor. Okay, so as I do that, you can see it's conserving volume. So that is, as it stretches in one direction, it's squashing in the other two directions. So it's staying the same overall volume. And notice that it's not stretching or squashing directly along world coordinates, but in the rotation of the squash handle itself. So if I rotate the squash handle, we can see that more dramatically. Let's just rotate it in the perspective view. So as I rotate the squash handle, it's causing the ball to squash in different directions. So in fact, what I want right now is just rotation values of zero. So I'm just gonna highlight all the rotate channel values for the squash handle and type in a zero and hit enter. And now when I adjust the squash factor, it's squashing exactly up and down in the world Y axis. Okay, so that's great. 